So I just got the 5800X 3D, which is the fastest gaming CPU in the world right now. Particularly fast for games like Hearts of Iron 4, like simulation type games. Uh, so let's see how fast this runs. And yeah, this is in real time. And if you know anything about this game, you know that is notoriously slow. And that this is extremely, extremely fast for the game to run. And uh, I've played until late game. And in late game, it actually doesn't slow down that much from this speed right here. Which is pretty crazy. This game is normally extremely, extremely slow. Uh, so let's see why exactly, actually, the CPU is so fast. The 5800X 3D. Uh, I actually... I actually uh, wrote a little program. Let's go take a look at it. And don't worry, you don't need to know anything about programming at all. Uh, but effectively, I'll explain it very shortly. We have three different scenarios that we're testing. We have a list of data, four million numbers long, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through that list of data, all four million numbers, a thousand times. We're gonna perform a simple operation on it and just time how long it takes. I'll put the milliseconds. Uh, then we have a second list of data. However, this list of data, this list of four million numbers, again, is stored randomly throughout the entire system in any random order. So it's not in order, and they do not have to all be sequential. So it usually takes a lot longer to process data like that. Uh, we're going to loop through it 100 times only because of how much longer it takes to process it. So uh, 10 times less loops through it, and we're going to do the same simple operation. We have a third scenario, though, where specifically I decided to make a, another list of numbers, 64 megabytes long. So uh, that is four times those four million numbers, so it's 16 million numbers long. And additionally to that, we are going to be looping through it in a random order. The numbers are stored in order. However, I'm going to be going through it randomly. And we're going to perform a simple operation. And we're going to do that 100 times. So let's find the exe for this. Right over here. Let's close Visual Studio. Regain a little bit of performance, perhaps. Uh, and let's see what our timing is. 467 milliseconds, 1,423 milliseconds, and 2,800 milliseconds for that. Now, I just so happen to actually have access to another computer that instead of having a 5800X 3D in it, we have a regular 5800X. And I took some performance numbers for that. And we can take a look at them here. So we get from 467 milliseconds to 431. So it's faster in the first scenario. We're just processing 4 million numbers sequentially. It's a little bit faster. Uh, the second scenario, it's a lot slower. It's almost 50% slower. So 2,000 milliseconds versus only 1,400 for the 5800 XAD. And this one is the, like the real test. This is the worst case scenario almost. 2,800 milliseconds versus 7,500 milliseconds. So almost three times faster for the 5800X3D. And so uh, let's take a, take a look at the specs for them to see what could be making them so ridiculously different. So we got the 5800X, and let's get the 5800X3D specs. Uh, let's look at them right here. So obviously eight cores, 16 threads, both of them. We can see the boost clock is from 4.5 gigahertz to 4.7 on the 5800X. So the 5800X actually has a higher clock speed than the 5800X 3D. Same with the base clock, 4.3 versus 4.8. So that explains the first test. We were looping through 4 million numbers. This had an extra 200 megahertz. It was able to process it a little bit faster. Uh, but now we get to the actual difference right here where the L3 cache, we see that the 5800X has 32 megabytes. Well, the 5800X 3D has 96 megabytes, three times the L3 cache. Effectively, what L3 cache is, 
is its RAM that's placed right onto your CPU. And so whenever your CPU needs to do some processing, there's a very good chance that it needs to, needs to take all those numbers, needs to throw them into your L3 cache, and then it'll process it. So it loads it from the RAM into your L3 cache, and it processes that data. And that process is usually pretty fast. Like for the first scenario, when we were processing a list of 4 million numbers sequentially, we just had to uh, do that a couple of times. We had to load you know, the 4 million numbers into uh, cache, and then that's it. But then what ends up happening in other scenarios is that you end up having to load it from cache and unload it much more often, uh, which slows it down. I have uh, hopefully a, a little visualization here. Let me try to find it. Okay, hopefully this is good. Probably not, but right here we have the scenario one. We have a list of numbers. This number one, two, three, four. This represents the in, the order in which we are trying to process the data. So we're trying to read this in this order. Of course, it's in sequential order. It's very simple to read. Imagine we have a fifty-eight hundred X. Right, And imagine we can load up this many numbers at once. Well, we're going to load up this many numbers at once, then we're going to load up the next chunk of numbers, then we're going to load up the next chunk of numbers. Right? You know, it's relatively simple. We only have to do that a couple of times, really. We're processing 4 million numbers. I mean, I think even for 4 million numbers, you can fit that all into the cache all at once. 5800X3D in this scenario has three times the cache, so it could pick up three times as much numbers, but... I mean, it doesn't even really matter. It doesn't take that long to load stuff into cache unless you're doing it a lot, a lot of times, which is where this second scenario comes in. This was the second scenario on the program that I wrote, a labeled list. And you can see it's a lot different. The data is sparse, it's spread out, and it's in a random order. You see one, then we have seven, then six, then 13. So you would want to read it in this order, we would want to go one, two, three, and you can see that's very slow and tedious process. So imagine uh, if we had a 5800X, perhaps, we would go here and we would uh, load up this amount of data, for example, and we would get one, okay, and we get two. So let's load up two. Okay, we got two, now we need three. Three is over here. We got to jump back and we got to load up three. We also got four, uh, but five is down here. So we got to load up this section. We got five, but six is over here. Okay, we got six. And you can see this is a very tedious process. We're constantly jumping back and forth to load and unload and load and unload the data. And it's the amount of times that this happens in these types of scenarios that makes the larger amount of cash much more performant on the 5800X3D versus the 5800X. For the X3D, instead of grabbing this much data at once, it has three times the cache, so perhaps I can grab all this data at once. And in this simple scenario, I've gotten all the numbers. I don't have to jump around. I got one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But, you know, imagine a larger scenario. This wouldn't happen. It would just boost your performance by a very significant amount. And that was especially evident in the third scenario, where I almost got three times the performance. The third scenario was just like the first scenario. Everything was sequential, except the numbers were in a random order. So I wasn't reading one, two, three, four. I was reading them randomly. So they were close enough together where perhaps if I had to read, if I had to read this block, then this block, the 5800X3D would be able to do it, but the 5800X would not be able to do it. Uh, this type of cache performance matters particularly for uh, gaming workloads because it end up, ends up being that the data that you have to process is often all over the place, and you're going to have to constantly be unloading and reloading in data into the cache. The larger cache is going to mean that you have to do that less often or that you can just keep the data loaded into the cache and you don't have to constantly load and unload it. It's not the process of loading and unloading it that's slow. It's a process of doing that 
millions of times as you jump back and forth between the data. That's slow. That's why the 5800X 3D is so much faster. But that also means that in scenarios like this, where I'm only doing it a couple times, I'm going to load this, then this, then this chunk of data. Well, it's not that much faster because I'm only really loading the data into cache a couple of times since it's all right there. That means for stuff like CPU rendering, it's not really any faster, the 5800X 3D. In fact, it's going to be slower than the 5800X because the 5800X has 200 megahertz more clock speed. So I hope this was a good enough explanation of why the 5800X 3D is so much faster.